What's up everybody? This is Chemis Keeps Going. My name's Chemis. This is a cup of tea because I'm British. <laughs> and today we're going to be doing a reaction video to guess what? Things you should never ask a Brit. So if you want to find out how accurate these things are, keep watching. Okay guys, so we are going to be doing a reaction video today and I'm very excited for this. Didn't realise how much was involved in doing reaction videos, but hey, it's all a learning process and I know going forward. But I'm also excited because I love watching reaction videos, I just find them quite fascinating. Especially when you watch a reaction video that is based on your country, nation or demographic of people to see what the stereotypes are and how accurate or inaccurate they may be. Some are quite funny, some are a little bit hmm, questionable, but yeah, it's quite exciting to, to watch those type of videos. So I'm very excited <laughs> to do this type of video today. But before we get into the video, please can I ask that you give this video a thumbs up because it definitely helps other people see the content on YouTube. And also do consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting that notification bell, which will tell you whenever I release new videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, and the details for the video will be in the description box below. Welcome to watch Mojo UK and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 questions you should never ask British people. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we've looked at annoying, awkward, but usually avoidable questions that are often aimed at the British, whether from visiting tourists or fellow Brits. I love Number tea. 10, <laughs> do you live in a castle? Come on in, you must be worn out. Don't believe everything you see on Downton Abbey. Not everyone in the UK lives in extreme luxury. I do get asked that question. I did get asked that question accents. in the past. But that doesn't stop the rest of the world believing that we all walk sweeping halls to bedrooms with grand four posters, bathrooms with regal roll top tubs, and sitting rooms solely designed for afternoon tea and pleasant chit chats. In fact, mm. the majority of us have. But you know what? I will say, while a majority of the people don't live in those type of stately homes, there's this thing that I've noticed with homes in the UK versus, say, for example, homes in North America. UK tend to be a lot more open to traditional and, you know, very old school homes, a lot of original features, fireplaces, cornicing, dado, picture rails, etc, etc. Whereas I find with North America, they like a lot of modern builds, everything open plan. Whereas in the UK, we like everything everything kind of sectioned off. You have an official drawing, sitting, living room, whatever you want to call it. Then you have an official dining room and then you have your kitchen. It's quite interesting, but yeah, I used to get this question a lot. Does have local accents, work everyday jobs and live in modest houses or flats. The escape to the country castle on the hill is but a pipe dream for the majority of the population. True. So if you ever ask this question and someone answers yes, then you're probably in pretty esteemed company. Yeah, beg your pardon. Number 9. Is Scotland in England? There are a number of variations here, each as annoying as the last. Yeah, get that a lot. But again, it's a geography, it's a geography thing. I'm not that great at geography, so I can understand it, but you would be surprised how often I would get asked this question. Oh my gosh, yeah. Wales in Scotland, Scotland in Britain, aren't the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland just the same thing? Like with most countries and regions around the world, the British borders have chopped, changed and blurred throughout history. And home nation's diplomacy does seem to alter from year to year. But the key thing to remember is that they're all separate countries with unique identities. None of this should be happening, should it? Any question that implies that being Scottish is the same as being English risks an on-the-spot geography lesson from whoever it is you're speaking to. So cheer up. It's not the end of the world. Number 8. Beans on toast? Okay, so this isn't exactly an everyday query, but the general confusion that British menus can cause is pretty hilarious. We Brits are proud of our hearty breakfast options, and the full English is a firm favourite for many. Yes. But if you're looking for something quick, easy, and so bloody British it hurts, then beans on toast is the way to go. 
100% I agree with this. Beans on toast is a staple for so many people. Beans are good for you, so you're kind of eating healthy <laughs> to an extent. It's one of those things where it can be seen as, like they're saying, you know, a very quick, simple, easy meal or snack, or it's something that you shouldn't have because it's kind of associated with student life and not having that much money. It's kind of got that connotation that, oh yeah, this is what poor students eat. They'll just eat beans on toast or they'll eat pasta, you know? And beans on toast for me, amazing. Fun fact though, I actually love cold baked beans. I know it's so weird, but I don't know, it's my thing. I've had them ever since I was a kid like that. But yeah, beans on toast, Ugh, gosh. Add a little bit of um, sriracha, ooh. Only the beanie bready blend often leaves non-Brits scratching their heads, but it's best not to question it. It's a definite case of don't knock it till you've tried it. Number seven. One other thing actually with baked beans, and I don't know, some people may find this weird, but it's something that my mum used to do when I was young. She would make like cottage pie, shepherd's pie, um, cause they're different. One's lamb, one's beef, but she would make that and um, she would put baked beans in there. I don't know what it was, but when you add the beans, oh my God, so good. Try it, definitely try it and let me know in the comments if you do and what you think of it. Cause I guarantee you, you will be a convert after that. Who do you support? <laughs> Who do I support? Yeah. It's a bit of a loaded question. Although it's pretty hard to believe otherwise when you consider how much football is shown on British TV, not everyone is a football fan. Yeah, so true. asking people which I'm team not. they support is far from a surefire conversation starter. Constant dizzying 24 hour year long endless football, every kick of it massively mattering to someone presumably. And even if you do happen upon a footy supporter who issues a probably passionate pitch for their favourite team, you might still be talking your way into trouble, particularly if you mention a rival of theirs or any team they don't like. Oh, and under no circumstances should you refer to the beautiful game as soccer either. They're having a laugh today. Well, they're winning. Yeah, they're having a laugh. <laughs> Number six, do you really drink tea every day? A line of questions. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, I love tea. I love tea. I used to drink it a lot when I was younger, but I was a lot more into herbal teas and uh, fruit teas. But I, for me, English breakfast is just the best all round tea. When you make English breakfast tea, never put the milk in first. Who the hell does that? And you don't have milky tea. I mean, milky tea is a thing, like Hong Kong, they do milky tea and it's amazing, but it's completely different to this. You know, it's got a few different types of tea and stuff like that and it's a lot sweeter and everything and creamier but English breakfast tea, splash of milk, two sugars maximum for me and you can see in the video here she's kind of got her pinky out I don't know where that came from not everyone does that which seems particularly popular in America it often feels like the rest of the world is more obsessed with our apparent tea habits than even we are would you like a cup of tea too mate Nothing close to my heart than a good cup of British char. Which isn't to say that tea isn't a sizable part of British culture, because it is. Yeah. And yes, lots of us do drink it every day, multiple times a day, but it's really not that big of a deal. It's just tea. And there's more to us than just the tea bags we buy and how much milk we take. There's also the sugar sweetener debate and which biscuits are best for dunking. Oh, oh my God. Rich tea are the biscuits you dunk in tea, and I don't normally dunk my biscuits in my tea. I like to have the biscuits on the side, but I've got a few actually, because I've been having biscuits with my tea. <laughs> Shortbread. Mm. I love a good shortbread biscuit when I'm having tea. Sometimes I'll have a chocolate like hobnob or chocolate digestive. Plain digestives are also really good. Oh my god, look at me talking about biscuits. This is a typical British conversation, for real. If anything, our questioners should be less concerned with the quantity we consume and more focused on the fine art of preparing the stuff. I think I'll have sleepy time. That sounds good to me. 
Number five, what's the weather like? Why does it always rain on me? For whatever reason, <laughs> everyone loves to talk about the great British weather. But be that warned, they do. once you get stuck in a conversation about it, it can go on forever. Get two Brits chin-wagging on whether the weather is too hot, too cold, too humid, or too windy, and you'll feel as though the small talk could spiral for centuries. What a yeah. battle it was! Oh my god. When you're having a conversation for the first time, the weather comes up every single time without fail. Like, I don't understand why, but at the same time, it's a conversation, it's something that I even instigate. Conversation about the weather is ridiculous. I've even got friends that live here from abroad and they even say that they notice they do it. Once you move here, you become assimilated and you just talk about the weather. What a storm we endured! If you're a tourist traveling to Britain for your holidays, then we'd probably advise dodging the topic altogether. Unless you'd like a detailed breakdown of the local atmospheric conditions compared to the national average. Mm. If that was what you were after, True. then ask me and good luck to you. Number four, are you Australian? All the time. It's a surprisingly common query issued to us Brits, and it's nearly always completely wide of the mark. Yeah. As anyone with even a primary school atlas knows, Australia is nowhere near the UK. Yes, the well, countries share various things throughout think. their histories, and they're often pitted against each other in various sporting contests, but quite why the two nations are so regularly confused is a mystery. Some say the accents are similar, but few actual Australians or British people are ever likely to agree with that. It's truth. It just doesn't make any sense. You know? No. I'm and South African, he actually says good I get way. asked that a lot, well, accent-wise. Well. Number three, have you met the Queen? No. The UK isn't the largest in terms of landmass, but it's not so small that we all know everyone else who lives here. You would be surprised how many times I would get asked that question. Do you know the Queen? Have you met the Queen? Have you seen the Queen? You don't really see the Queen or meet the Queen unless you're formally invited. The other thing I would always get asked is, oh, you're from London. Oh, I have a friend, his name's David. Oh yeah, he lives in London. Okay, I don't really know David. Well, I mean, there's a lot of Davids in London. I don't know which one is your David. Yeah, it's really weird like that, you know? <laughs> And the very vast majority of us have never crossed paths with anyone from the royal family, let alone the Queen. Getting an invite to the palace isn't quite as easy as it's often perceived to be, though there are dedicated fans of the monarchy ready to line the streets for the next stately occasion. But even then, the best you can realistically Ooh, look at those flowers. is a so nice. wave in your direction. And that tree. The same goes for British celebs as well. The chances of running into Benedict Cumberbatch, Stephen Fry, Meghan Markle, or the rest are decidedly slim. I'm afraid I don't know any of the minor royal. Number two, is that near London? In a similar vein, the yeah, UK does that's a look question. like a pretty small place on the map, but there's a lot more to it than just like, one city. It's all London, baby. Anything, sorry, anything that, you know, you say to someone and they're not from the UK, it'll always be, oh, is that near London? Oh, is that near London? Because London is like the, the reference point. Yes, London is a tourist hotspot and political centre, but we don't all know, or even care, how far away it is from our towns, villages, hamlets and homes. Yeah. And funnily enough, we don't actually measure our distances by how close something is to the capital. Oh yeah, that's For true. some Brits, London is hours away, and they may never take a trip there. So the mm. tourist tendency to switch Britain... <clears throat> You'd be surprised. There's a lot of people that don't really come into London itself. People don't go into the capital of every country. I, I'm assuming, you know, like in North America, not everyone goes to DC. It's the same type of thing, you know? Britain and London, as though they're interchangeable, feels a little odd for the majority of folks who don't hail from the big smoke. Oh, very well. As long as I still have that delicious speech about my boyhood in Surrey. Number one, who did you vote for? Politics oh, can be a sensitive subject in a lot of countries, but this... That is definitely a loaded question. It's not really something that we get 
asked here locally is definitely something that people ask from abroad and I think that's more because politics are a bigger thing in everyday society for other countries with the exception of Brexit politics was never really a big thing when we have a new prime minister or things like that it's it's news within the UK but it's not necessarily like a big global thing unlike for example the presidency of the US everyone in the world knows what's going on I can understand that a lot of people do ask us but for us it's not really a big thing to be political most people don't really ask those questions because it's considered a little bit rude i would say this question feels especially loaded and quite clumsy whenever it's bandied about britain first off there's the whole keep ourselves to ourselves cultural stereotype which plenty of us probably do live up to second there's the colossal can of worms that is brexit for non-Brits, Brexit probably seems a solid conversation starter, but you could quickly find yourself in the midst of mighty debates. Yeah. Whether you're Labour, Conservative, Lib Dem or other, who did you vote for is rarely asked lightly. Mm -hmm. And the answers range from awkward mumbling to impassioned soapbox speeches. Thought we should get rid of half of the MPs, ideally the top half. Do we really need them all? There are far too many of them. I think tonight they're even electing an MP for Kanye West. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great- That was the video. It was quite interesting. I definitely agree with some of the questions that you shouldn't really ask Brits. And I noticed that a lot of the questions I do get asked, some of them, some of them are like silly questions. Some of them are genuine questions. But yeah, it was quite interesting. So I don't know, let me know what you thought in the comments. Were there any questions or statements that you agreed or disagreed with or that you've personally experienced whether receiving that question or being someone who's asked that that question and maybe didn't really understand the kind of connotations attached to that type of question yeah definitely leave me a comment below let me know I'd be very interested to see what people thought but yeah that's the video all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching the video guys please do give this video a thumbs up it helps other people see my content you know the YouTube algorithm and all that but also do consider subscribing to my channel and clicking that notification bell because it will let you know every single time I release a new video so until the next time. I will see you soon. Take care guys. Bye.